before we start, I'd like to remind you that this assembly has a peculiarity, and it is that as we had no assemblies with the members in recent years because of uh, what we all know, at the time we asked what we had to do from the legal standpoint, and the answer was to counsel the um, members' uh, um, assembly. So that is why we're doing everything we should have done in the previous years when we didn't have any general assemblies with the members. So now let me give you the annual report for 2021. The content of uh, the presentation is first uh, the functions, the role of the board, then uh, what uh, the board did in 2021, the operation and the characteristics of the board, documents and guidelines of the board, and the most relevant uh, uh, solutions that we did, and what other things did we do as uh, members of the board in 2021. So instead of giving the report of uh, the presentation of what we do, let's do it the other way around, because sometimes the people get confused with the role of the board of directors in LACNIC and in the community. So I'm doing it the other way around, st stating what we do not do. So one of the things that the board of directors does not do, we do not define the policies for the uh, resources nor with the policies. What we do is that we participate in two parts uh, of uh, the PDP. One is the ratification process that is at the end of the entire process. And there we are responsible when there's an appeal. We only participate in those two instances, but uh, throughout the rest of the development, we do not, uh, we only participate, but we have no impact on. Uh, so. Our responsibility for ratifying or for appealing the policy needs to be well done. And in order to achieve that, we read all the proposals, we study them in depth, and we analyze what each of them implies. We monitor the discussion of the policies in the mailing list, and we do an in-depth reading of the impact analysis, and we see what the staff considers that that could be the impact. And um, in uh, the uh, board, all everybody was uh, here because uh, uh, everybody knew what was happening in the forum. So that uh, when the time comes to ratify, although we may have a report by the staff telling us how the process was, we also have uh, first hand uh, the uh, we we know what happened with each policy. So that is basically what we do. And other things that we do in the PDP is that when we see that there's something that could be further improved in the process, we can point out some initiatives to help enhance the project. One of the initiatives, uh, one of the recent initiatives, was that since uh, given the complexity um, of uh, the analysis, we needed the people to have a good training to improve that. So that's the kind of thing that the board of directors does, but we are not responsible for the uh, internet resource uh, assignment policies. We do not define which organizations will receive the resources. So it's not that I have a friend that wants an IPv4 slash the 34. No, we don't even touch the uh, resource uh, assignment uh, uh, process. That is done by the staff of LACNIC following the policies defined by the community in the public policy forum. So we do not get involved on which other organizations that will receive resources. We also analyze the audit reports about uh, the process uh, for um, uh, resource uh, allocation in LACNIC. And also we uh, uh, read uh, the audit reports of the RIRs. So there are regular uh, audits to Nick BR and Nick uh, Mexico to ensure that they are abiding by the policies. And although the board is not in charge of the audit, it's up to the staff, we monitor the results of the analysis uh, uh, resulting from it. If there's anything that needs correction, then, then uh, corrections are made. Oh, we agree as to what are the adjustments that need to be done for the processes to um, meet uh, the policies, the requirements established by uh, the 
community. We do not conduct any financial audits, but we do check um, the quarterly and annual re uh, financial reports that are in the hands of the staff. And we work closely with the fiscal committee and the external auditors to understand the possibilities of improvement that they produce in their analysis and interventions. So they intervene, they audit and see what's up working, what's not. They produce a report, but we want to know what happens and if there are any possibilities for adjustment. What the board does is to propose some ways that that could be enhanced together with the staff, and then the staff implements the improvement. So we don't conduct the audits, but clearly we need to know what the results have been to ensure that the organization is going the right path. We do not make the operational uh, uh, decisions in the organization. Basically, we are in charge of uh, the strategic part, while the operational aspects are in the hands of the staff. We give guidance to the CEO every year in December. We establish the guidelines and we uh, make adjustments to their proposals and we know what the objectives for the following year are. We approve them and we monitor the uh, strategic objectives to see to it that they are met. But it's the staff that defines the priorities, nor do we decide about technical issues. That is, we don't get involved on uh, who they will buy the stationery to, or we don't uh, get involved in decisions of that sort. What is it that we do? We assess the risks of the operations through a risk uh, committee. The board has a, a risk committee that uh, evaluates the risk, and uh, the staff shows us what are the potential risks, and we see how those risks are being addressed, and after trying to solve those risks, what are the remaining ones, and we define whether anything else has to be done because we are responsible for protecting the organization from the risk, and we monitor the results of the analysis. And at present, we are in the process of creating a committee devoted to information security. Although LACNIC has, well, the risk of a information security are increasingly important. So we decided to create a committee that will be in charge of information security. Our approach is more executive. And so that is defining the risks in the organization and uh, the actions taken to mitigate them. Also, we don't work in uh, in achieving, in, in raising funds uh, for the uh, uh, establishing uh, the networks because we don't work with infrastructure, but we are interested in promoting the growth of the internet in the region. But we don't, we are not looking for investment in the region because that is uh, the responsibility of other organizations. So we develop uh, promotion programs, or for instance, the uh, Frida project is in that line, and some other projects that are targeted are aimed at improving the deployment of the network, but that's not a role of the board, nor did, do we ha handle the monetary resources. We do um, uh, adopt uh, the annual budget and we ensure that uh, the, the members' fees are being used properly and in line with uh, the predefined strategic objective. So we are interested for the resources to be well used, but we do not make this, uh, specific decisions to, as to the use of the money in the organization. But as I said, we uh, uh, check uh, the audit reports and we ensure that they meet the adequate requirements. And we also define the investment guidance to see to for reserves and things like that. We, then we'll see how that is doing in the financial part. So we define and limit the investment by the organization, and we assist the staff in that cooperation. And the Finances Commission supervises, oversees the financial part, but we are not in charge of the specific transactions. This is a uh, a diagram that Oscar will tell you about later. A strategic plan for, was uh, developed for 2025 where, with uh, a key objective. And here you see the pillars needed to achieve that strategic goal. And 
at the bottom, it mentions some of the things that we do f with that aim. As a board, when we analyze the projects, the initiatives that will be done, we ensure that they are in line with the, the 2025 strategic plan that the board participated in through some of its members and staff also involved and with with advisors. So we know where we're heading because the strategy is a responsibility of the board. And this is something that I also wanted to show you because LACNIG is an organization that will turn 20 years old this year. And all organizations have the stages in 2022. Well, at that time, LACNIC had problems that were quite different from we have now. At that time, we had to seek how to operate. We're only starting and we're seeing how we could cater with, to the processes. We had to focus on how to operate. Basically, at that time, there were very few members. Then there was a growth stage, and with growth, we not only had to operate, but to operate at scale. So start operating, then operating at scale. The systems grow. We had to respond to the community. But at, after some years, we now reach a stage which is a stage of maturity. We now have many more members. We have more economic resources, and we have more personnel. So we're now focused on operational excellence. The initiatives you can see that we have presented in recent years and the ones that we need to submit to this assembly are aimed at that. LACNIC is an organization where we seek excellence and to maintain that. And how do you know that we are at the level of excellence? Because when we look at the different reports and studies from different standpoints regarding the organization, we realize that it is almost difficult to improve that, but we want to maintain that level and standard. When we look at the best place to work, we are at top ranking, more than 90%. When we look at customer satisfaction, we rank very high. We have approved quality processes and certificates. When we have auditing reports, fiscal reports or external reports, whenever they say, it's more and more difficult to improve things because the processes are more streamlined. So we're now at a stage of operational excellence. And as we we'll see, the change you will be, we're proposing to the bylaws have to do with the fact that this board of directors has focused on doing things properly with transparency and other things. And we do so because we like to work in that way. And we hope that this is not only based on the will of those who are here, but any board in the future will also have to comply with this being transparent oriented at excellence, so this should not only be an initiative of this board, but part of the bylaws of this organization. So that is where we stand now, at the stage of operational excellence. We want to maintain ourselves there. We want, don't want to decline. decline. We want to maintain the level at that plateau. What was the structure of the board of directors in 2021? Instead of looking at the photographs, you can look at us who are seated here because we are the same people. So although you have met them, let me introduce them in the order they are here. Javier Salazar from Mexico, Esteban Lescano from Argentina, Carmen Dennis from Mexico, Warner Maya from Brazil, Gabriela Donailo from Argentina, Evandro Varonil from Brazil, Oscar Robles, who is the executive director, and has uh, he can vote. Yo era el presidente el año pasado, así como este. He has speaking rights, and Javier is the vice chair. Gabriel is treasurer. Warner is the second treasurer. Esteban is the secretary. Evando is the second secretary. Carmen is a vocal, and Oscar is the CEO. And in addition to that, we have several commissions and additional activities. Last year, because of the pandemic, there were less. But this is, this is how we distributed the workload in the laboratory. In, sorry, in the board of directors. I'm sorry. This is quite a complex diagram, but basically, 
what I would like you to take home um, regarding this slide. As I mentioned, all the activities in this chart are things that the board can do, but that would not be efficient because it would be quite complex if we become involved with each decision of the uh, organization. So the staff decided to do, the board decided to work on the strategic aspects. The objective, uh, the long-term strategic plan, and each has different stages. So the staff has been organized in such a way to implement the projects and initiatives aimed at complying with the strategic objectives and in general to comply with the long-term strategic plan. So we have reached a balance where the staff does most of the work and the board has to be informed of the processes of what is happening because when we make decisions, we have to be sure that we are deciding correctly. So we trust the staff very much. We trust that they carry out the activities and the board does follow up of these activities. And when we make decisions, this is because we studied everything in depth before making a decision. We ask them when we need uh, more feedback and when we, we sometimes, sometimes hire consultants. So when we make decisions, we are well informed. Some of the things we do to communicate as a board are the following. We have a couple of mailing lists. In the mailing list, we discuss things that are then ratified in the in-person meetings last year. We had 11 two-hour meetings each. We have a meeting every month. These were by Zoom. And finally, after the pandemic, we had one in-person meeting finally in the month of November, he corrects himself, in December in Montevideo, which was a full three-day meeting where we review the annual budget. We discuss the budget for the previous year and many things have to do with the following year and also with the closing year. We also have internal commissions that deal with different aspects, as was mentioned. One is investment and finances and one is risks. Time distribution of the board. This pie chart show, shows what we invest our time in. And there are some interesting things, for example, financial decisions, decisions regarding operations, internal decisions. These make up most of our time. But we also have to dedicate times to the bylaws as the one that we're going to submit today, present today, then security, the reports, and how these are submitted the, during the pandemic, we had to decide how we could remain in connection with the community. And these initiatives were submitted to us as a board. So basically, this is how the time is distributed. This does not take into account the work behind all these. this work. We meet for two years, but we had to be ready reading all the proposals and information provided by the staff so we were duly informed after the meeting. We prepare minutes of the meetings. We have to read the minutes and see that this really reflects what was discussed during meeting, plus other issues as well. This is even more time. Documents and guidelines of the board. During 2021, we created some guidelines regarding the scope and responsibilities of the Fiscal Commission. Basically, the objective was that when the commission, Fiscal Commission conducted work, what was expected, expected for them to do, and what was their task in comparison with other activities of the organization. This improve the uh, surveillance functions of the Fiscal Commission and allows then a better definition of the agenda between the Fiscal Commission and the Finance Committee and the staff, which takes place every year. During 2021, we updated documents that already existed, which did we update the one on investment policies, deficient and functioning of the board's committees, and the procedures for declaration of relations. This was very important because during the pandemic, many things sort of were a bit complex. And some of the most relevant decisions of the board are the following. During the year, in January, the positions for the board are appointed. 
and also the participation in other events and uh, organizations. We define the calendar for the year and the elections program. In February, we approved the objectives of the executive director for the rest of the year. In the month of March, in normal years, we'd approve the invitation for the ordinary assembly last year. This was not possible. So we consulted what we should do, whether we're going to have an assembly or not. And it was decided not to have the assembly for legal reasons and because of the situation. In normal years, we have to review all the invitations for the assembly and then issue it. We also prepared the annual operation plan and the preparation of the annual financial report. So in that month, we approve everything that was corresponded to the previous year. In November, we do follow up and recommendations for the fiscal audit and commission. So we meet for several days to revise everything what happened in the previous year and what will be done in the following year. These are some of the resolutions of the board, which are quite a lot. But basically, these are the things that are decided by the board of directors. The minutes are public and can be read, but these have to do with responding to the strategic objectives of the organization. As I mentioned earlier, ratification of policies is an important topic in the discussions of the board. When a policy has to be ratified, we discuss the policy, we analyze what the final version is, and we follow the entire process. The staff helps us in presenting a report as to how these proposal were, proposals were analyzed. Another of the important things is why does the board ratify the decisions or the policies? This is because the policies are defined by a community that is different to that of the members. So these policies are defined by the community, whether LACNIC members or not. And LACNIC has to apply these. LACNIC is an organization that has a structure. So if there's a policy that was defined by the community, which might imply something that might affect the organization in a negative way, we have to make an alert regarding this. Very often, this has not happened. But the board has the obligation of defending LACNIC as an organization. So if a policy includes a procedure that is not in line, then we have to reject it. So we have to be informed about the discussion. We also do follow up of the commissions, of the committees, although not all the board, the entire board participates here. The commissions submit on risk investments or the ethics committee. Other topics discussed in 2021, I, I won't tire you with the full list. But once again, we do quarterly reviews of some of the re reports, the, relation, the reports of the NIRs, and also conflicts of interest. Topics that occurred during the pandemic. One of the important things was that in 2021, we were able to have a small return to normality. The board participated in some of the activities, particularly towards the end of the year. We participated in an executive training course for corporate government in LACNIC 36, or the hybrid modality. We participated in the NANOC Aring event in the Abrint meeting, and we could have the annual meeting of the board, which was held in Montevideo, because the conditions of the pandemic made this possible. This was held in December last year. So that is all. Thank you very much.